All right, so today we're going to talk about protecting our signers' non-private information, or NPI. And we're also going to do kind of some general notary signing agent reminders, things that came up this week that I want to go over. All right, so first off, what is that NPI? Uh, that phrase refers to non-public, or sometimes it's called non-public private information. So you might hear NPI or NPPI. This refers to information revealing personal financial information that isn't publicly available. So this is the stuff that you don't want other people to know about, right? This might include your social security number, driver's license numbers, passport numbers, birth dates, um, family information, account numbers, addresses, credit scores, assets, and debt listings. Uh, like I said, this is the information that's private. You can't, it's not publicly available, unlike certain information, right? So that's what NPI refers to. Now, how does, what does this have to do with us, right? How is this uh, associated with what we do? Well, we're notary publics, right? That public means that we provide a public service. And our commission as a notary signing agent is really an essential part of the mortgage and loan closing process. And this is a vital public service, but it carries a weighty responsibility to protect our signers. And really, as a notary public, we're the last line of defense to safeguard signers against fraud. That's the reason why we're here, right? That's the reason why the state gives that commission out is to protect signers. And as a notary signing agent, someone who's trained to handle loan documents, we handle lots of sensitive information about our signers. And it's critical that we do all we can to reduce fraud by say, taking certain per, uh, protections. And so as we've discussed, loan docs contain numerous pieces of signers NPI. I like to say that when we have a set of loan docs, we pretty much know everything important financially about a signer is contained in a set of like refinance documents. Now, some bits of NPI on their own might not be harmful, right? An address on its own with no other information is not going to, going to be harmful. But if you have a social security number, a driver's license number, and an address, that might become harmful, right? That informi information might be valuable to those who are looking to do something fraudulent with it. So we really need to be conscientious, conscientious <laughs> when handling real estate documents um, because those docs contain some very private, serious information. And it's our responsibility to protect signers from fraud anywhere we can. So not just on the notary end of it, right? Making sure signers are who they say they are, making sure documents look good, but in our handling of documents as well. And this is something that you'll see when you get the book and in any of our videos, the golden rule is something that I refer to a lot, right? This is a Bible principle. It's, it's a principle. Every culture agrees that it's the right way to do things, right? Treat others the way that you want to be treated. And we want to think of that in terms of protecting non-public uh, information or private information. We want to treat our signers in PI the way that we'd want ours treated, right? We don't want just anybody having our driver's license information. And we want to make sure nobody has our social, right? So because we're uh, entrusted with this responsibility of getting these documents signed, handling them, shipping them, we really want to think about how we can uh, do our bit to protect that information. So let's talk about how we can do that. So before and during the signing, there are good practices that you want to take to protect signers' information. First off, keep your computer safe. So install an active and reputable virus and scam software and always have it running. That's really important that your computer doesn't get hacked into. Um, it's gonna happen at one time or another. So we wanna make sure that we keep our computers as, as clean and safe as we can. Um, change your email and platform passwords every month if you can. Um, and don't use easy passwords, right? Like your last name, one, two, three, four. Uh, 
those can get hacked into. And even sites that you'd expect to, uh, that wouldn't, like SnapDocs, they've had breaches. They've had their data uh, be um, compromised. So change your passwords. And if at all pos possible, use uh, emails that require dual authentication, right? So they either make you, uh, they text you a code on your phone or they text it to another email um, or use a password vault. Password vaults are encrypted and they provide really complicated passwords on your computers. That way you can protect your, your, your emails and your platform passwords. Printing documents too is really important. You wanna print from a secure platform rather than saving to your desktop, if at all possible. So our platforms allow that where you can view the documents and print directly from our platform. Um, this is gonna make it more secure. So you're, you're working from a platform rather than saving to your desktop. And if your computer gets compromised, you might have an issue. Another way that you can protect the signer's documents is by using private and secured Wi-Fi only. So don't print at the library. Don't download documents from the Starbucks. Um, go home or in your office and print from a secured Wi-Fi that is password protected, right? Uh, another thing that is really critical is to not use public printers or copiers, if at all possible. Um, I have a story about this several years ago we had our Fidelity rep, so the rep at Fidelity that keeps people Fidelity approved, she asked us to remove one of our favorite notary signing agents. And when we asked uh, why, she said because she printed from her office, printed the documents, and then forgot about them. And one of her coworkers found them, didn't know where they belonged to, called the lender on the documents and told them that these documents were just left out. So one of our favorite notaries we could no longer use for fidelity signings because she printed publicly and forgot about them. And that will happen, right? Even in my own office, right? We'll print escrow docs and the signing is not for a few hours. So you run an errand and you forget about them. In your private office where nobody has access to them, that's not a big deal. But if you're at work and you're printing docs from work, that can be a big deal. So her situation was really the worst case, right? It went all the way to the lender and the lender found out that the docs were just sitting on a printer that the whole office, hundreds of people had access to. So just illustrates, don't use public printers or copiers, invest in your own printer and your own scanner. Um, I've talked to some notaries who always print their docs at FedEx. They think it's cheaper. It is not cheaper. You're going to cut into your margin for profit by printing there. So invest in a printer and I keep it at your home or your home office. And also important and can sometimes be neglected is don't let someone else print your documents, whether it's like a friend or a relative, unless they're your business partner, right? Maybe you work as a notary team. Um, maybe it's a husband and wife or your best friend or your mom or brother, whoever you pair up with for your notaries, they can print your documents if they're notaries, right? And they have the same commission, they have the same background checks, but don't let your friend or relative print the documents or handle them, right? These are private documents and we love our relatives, we love our friends, but we don't know what they're gonna do with that information, right? So we wanna make sure that we're the ones printing, maybe our business partner's allowed to, but outside of that, don't let your buddies print your documents or handle them. Let's talk about at the signing, after the signing, excuse me. So after the signing is big, and, and this is where a lot of issues come into play when it comes to not protecting our signers MPI. First off, invest in a document shredder. There's going to be times when you have to print multiple sets of docs and maybe the lender calls or escrow calls or the signing agency calls and says, hey, those docs are no good. We're getting new documents. Don't just throw those loan docs in the trash. Those documents contain pretty much all of a signer's financial information. It's the most important financial information that people can do serious fraud with. So invest in a document shredder so you can easily shred them. And also enforce a clean desk policy. So if you have sticky notes with signer's information, loose documents, maybe your printer jammed up and it printed the Patriot Act, but you had to print another one because it didn't look good, or maybe your toner was bad and it, it, you had to reprint something, 
don't leave those documents on your desk, scan them immediately. And I like this picture. I mean, I'll tell you, my desk is not as clean as this desk, but that's our goal, right? No personal information on your desk that belongs to signers, um, especially if your desk is at home and maybe you have your kids at home or your kids, friends or your relatives or whoever, um, you want to make sure to protect that information. It's, it doesn't belong to anybody else, right? We're entrusted with handling it. So keep your desk nice and clean. Uh, as for scanning, now I use my mobile scanner all the time. I love a mobile scanner, but you want to use a secure encrypted mobile scanning app. You don't want to use just your photo, you know, your camera roll and take pictures and save it to your camera roll. You don't want to do that. So invest in a scanning app. There's a lot of good free ones. Tiny scan is good. Cam scan, genius scan. Um, the best ones are like Adobe scan for your iPhone, um, Microsoft office lens. Evernote, there's a ton of them. Uh, TurboScan, that's another one. Use that. It'll save it to that app, which is a secure app. And again, don't take pictures with your camera roll. Um, and just on another note, when you're scanning, don't take pictures and upload hundreds of uh, pictures as scans. That recently happened. I'll give you a little story. Um, a notary held on to docs for several days. Signing was last Tuesday on Monday. Escrow was like, where, where are these docs at? Um, I asked her to scan them. What she did instead was take 150 pictures and upload each one. Don't do that, right? Don't do that for a variety of reasons. Like today's discussion, it's not safe. Those pictures, you can't really delete any picture that you take permanently, right? Once you take a picture, it's going to be out there forever, even on your phone, maybe in the cloud. It takes a lot to delete them. Um, so that was one no-no. And second, I then had to convert each image into an individual PDF. It took me forever. Um, and it was a huge delay and nobody was happy. So not using your, your phone to take scans is good in a lot of ways. So invest in a mobile scanning app. After the signing, so once you have the documents signed, you want to ship those docs immediately. Do not hold on to them. Now, if you're a notary that's uh, making money, so you're booking yourself pretty solid, or maybe you have lots of appointments and you, you, know, you have appointments right after you're signing and you can't ship immediately, you want to keep those documents in a secured location. So if that means going back to your home office, putting them in a safe or a file cabinet that's locked, or holding them on, on your person. So keeping them in your notary bag, keeping your notary bag on your person. Uh, best case, you ship the docs immediately. If that's not possible, store them. Now, don't forget about them. You might need to set a reminder, make a sticky note because notaries will do that. They'll put them in their file cabinet. And then three days later, we're wondering where the docs are and they, they still have them. So we don't wanna do that, but you wanna make sure to not leave them in an unsecured location. For example, in your vehicle. This happens more than it ought to. Uh, notaries will leave their notary bag or the documents in their vehicle and their vehicle gets broken into. And those docs are stolen, right? They'll see a bag. They'll take the bag. They don't, you know, they, most thieves probably won't know what to do with loan docs, right? They'll probably just trash them, but you expose your signer to, to the potential for fraud. So don't do that. This happens, like I said, all the time. Um, the other day I got a text on a Saturday, notary was crying, uh, very upset because her car got broken into and her notary bag with it. And that meant loan docs were stolen, her notary stamp, her notary journal. So the journal has borrower's ID information, right? And the type of transactions, their address, all this really valuable uh, uh, information if you're up to no good, right? So don't leave your docs in your car. Now, we probably have all been guilty of doing that, but in this world, there's so much fraud, we don't want to risk it. So from now on, don't do that. I've done that. I've left documents in my car. I've been lucky enough to not have anybody break into my car, but it's happened to my aunt. It's happened to our notaries. So it happens. So don't leave documents unattended. Um, the best thing to do is keep them in your notary bag until you ship them and keep that bag on your person. All right. Whoop. Okay. So next up, another way to prevent documents getting lost and thus borrowers private information getting lost is to package documents correctly. So you can help prevent 
unopened or lost packages. So if FedEx loses your docs or you use a, a cardboard letter size envelope and it gets opened, that can result in documents being lost. We touched on it last week. If you were on our class, um, this is happening every week. Uh, recently, a set of documents was shipped two weeks ago and it just arrived this week to escrow, but there was like a third of the documents that were signed. So that means that the other documents are now in a FedEx facility or in a FedEx truck or in the trash. Most likely they don't shred them. It would be wonderful if they did, but we can't guarantee that with borrowers' private information. So even though you're not responsible if FedEx loses the docs most of the time, the way that you package them can prevent issues happening. So you can protect the documents by using the right envelope. For loan documents over 60 pages, which is gonna be the majority of loan docs, right? Only use the sturdy packs or poly packs. And I have these pictures. So the poly packs are the polyurethane plastic packs. Um, they have a lot more room for documents. Make sure you seal the package. Those ones are acceptable. And then sturdy packs. Sturdy packs are meant for like loan documents. So they're a little thicker. The capacity is bigger. Um, they, they seal a little better. It's, it's very rare that these documents will get opened in transit. And, and of course, before shipping, ensure the package is sealed properly. Yesterday, I had a little miscellaneous set that I handled and there was a big line at FedEx and everybody was, was waiting on me. That's how it felt at least. And I almost left without sealing that package. You can't guarantee that FedEx is going to seal that for you and see that, right? So it's happened where escrow gets the docs and there's nothing in them. They're open. That means those documents are, you know, lost in the Bermuda Triangle of FedEx's Tennessee hub which you don't want that, right? So it's not your fault if documents get lost. It does happen. FedEx makes mistakes. I've told you before, I've had packages come back to escrow where half of the set is burnt because FedEx, I don't know, maybe the driver was smoking a cigarette and flicked it in the back of his truck. Who knows? You know, it's a mystery, uh, but we can help prevent that. We can do all we can to package them in a way that won't let them get lost because yeah, if they get lost, those documents are who knows where and who, who knows who's holding on to them. Uh, the consequences for FedEx losing documents or us losing documents is that we have to pay for uh, a credit monitoring for the signer. And that generally costs like $600, right? Because most loans have maybe two borrowers. So we have to protect both of them. It's about $300 each. Um, so yeah, if we can package them better in a way that doesn't have open envelopes, Oh my, oh no, I think my husband's computer is echoing me. Sorry about that. Um, then we can prevent, we can prevent further issues. So keep that in mind, take your time, use the right envelopes. Okay, so just to sum it up, we, you wanna do your part. All of this is gonna take preparation and initiative on your end to protect signers and PI. From time to time, we, we wanna analyze how well you're living up to the office of integrity that is being a notary public. I love to think about that name, notary public. That public is our service. We help the public, we protect the public. So it is an office of integrity. It's an important job and we need to do our part in analyzing how well we're doing and make adjustments when needed. Don't be discouraged. Like I said, I've made every mistake in the book. You just can move forward right? Forget about what you did. Don't be overly anxious. Just move forward. And remember that fraud is on the rise and deceitful individuals are developing more sophisticated ways to obtain this information for fraudulent purposes. So you don't want to be the reason a signer's MPI is compromised, right? And is in jeopardy. So take responsibility of those documents, handle them with care, they don't belong to you, right? They belong to the signer and the lender. So treat them that way. Treat them like they're not yours and take care of them. Uh, doing so is going to protect the signer, avoid any issues and avoid costly um, fixes, right? Having to buy credit monitoring costs a lot of money. Nobody wants to do it, right? But we have to when our signers um, non-public information gets in jeopardy. So do your part, take responsibility, accountability, and uh, you can help protect the signers and live up to that important job that we have as being notary publics.
All right, next up, dress and grooming. We'll just do a little presentation on dress and grooming, some reminders. Uh, we've had a, uh, some client feedback lately on inappropriate dress and grooming on the part of our notary signing agents. So let's go over what, what we should, should and not be doing. Should and shouldn't be doing. Okay, so first impressions are everything. We all know that, right? How you look and act is linked to how well you accomplish your taxes, tasks as an NSA. Everybody cares about how you look. Right, it, we're, we're humans, we're imperfect, even though really what's inside and how we perform is really what matters, they're so closely linked. You might be the best notary signing agent in terms of filling out the documents, the documents look perfect, but if you're dressed like a slob or you don't take your job seriously, you're not gonna get work. So how you look really correlates to how seriously you take your job. And it also shows respect for the signer. We want to address for the occasion and location of the signing. So what does that mean? Well, when a signing occurs at a signer's home, you want to dress business casual. If you show up wearing a super fancy dress or a three-piece suit, you might make the signer actually feel uncomfortable. You might be overdressed. Um, but if the closing or signing occurs at an office, maybe a lender or titles office, you might want to dress business professional right? A little bit fancier. So think about where you're going. Think about what the people there are going to be wearing and dress accordingly and maybe a little better than them. I always say that with our employees that work at title offices or escrow offices. We have some coast to coast employees that work in that office. I want them to look better than everyone else. I don't want them to wear a gown to work, but I want them to stand out in a positive way. And you should want to do the same. But Read your audience, right? If your signer's in their sweats, you know, if they're at home and they're in their comfy clothes, don't show up wearing your finest, right? But look business casual, professional, but not too fancy. And conversely, at an office, you don't want to stand out looking like, like a bum, right? So you want to look professional and fit in or maybe look a little bit better than everybody else. Let's talk about what not to wear. Now, this isn't our personal opinion, this is complaints that we've got from clients and signers directly. So you show up to a signing in maybe short shorts, mini skirt, distressed jeans, basketball shorts. I know um, we've had uh, signers or notaries show up in um, like board shorts, right? Surfing shorts or workout clothes. You're going to get a complaint if you show up in any of those. I'll be honest. When I first started, I was 18 and I got a really cute pair of mini shorts and I wore them with a blazer. So I thought I was professional. I look back now, I'm humiliated, right? Like, what was I thinking? I don't know. I was 18. That's what I was thinking. Wasn't thinking. Uh, as for tops, strapless tops, spaghetti straps. If you're showing too much skin, um, crop tops that show your midriff and t-shirts with logos, those are all no-nos. So avoid wearing revealing clothing or just sloppy clothing, too casual. As for um, shoes, don't wear flip-flops. Uh, avoid extremely high heels, especially if you're going into people's homes. If they have um, maybe really nice uh, wood floors, you might scrape the floors or scratch the floors. Um, also beanies. Uh, this one kind of surprised me, but we'll have complaints about people wearing beanies or baseball caps with logos. Um, we've had some notaries say, well, I wear a baseball cap because I'm going bald and that embarrasses me. If it's a nice clean baseball cap um, that doesn't look like you wear it, you know, cleaning in your yard or going to a baseball game, then that shouldn't be a problem, but just make sure it's nice and neat and clean and professional. Um, maybe an alternative to a baseball cap. If you're embarrassed about not wearing something on your head, uh, wear like a little newsboy cap or a nice fedora. My, my brother used to wear signings. He'd have his notary sweater and a fedora, and he always looked really good. Uh, but it wasn't too fancy, but it also wasn't too casual. I have some neat pictures. So I love these pictures. Um, let's talk about business professional and business casual. So we have our models here. They're wearing business casual. So slacks, a nice top, nice blouse, maybe a sweater. Um, uh, to the right, we have a gentleman wearing a polo. That's all business casual and it looks good. It looks good in 
any setting you go to, if you go to an office dressed like that, you're not going to stand out. If you go to someone's home, you're not going to make a statement by your clothes, right? Um, and then in their hands, they're holding what I would call business professional, right? So for the female here, she has a, a skirt, a dress, modest, attractive, but not too out there, too uh, trendy, but just attractive, modest clothing. And the gentleman has slacks, shirt, and a tie and a jacket. So typically ties are optional. Um, if someone comes into my home wearing a tie, we'll, we'll normally say, hey, take the tie off, get a little bit more comfortable. But if you're going into an office, a tie might be appropriate and you'll stand out in a good way. Um, but I like these pictures. Uh, you don't have to be uh, super trendy or super fashionable, just neat, well-fitting clothes um, that match the occasion. So where are we signing? When are we signing? All of those items um, play into what you should wear. Okay, I want to talk to you briefly before we end this presentation and get into our Q&A about white glove or wealth clients. So we have some clients that cater to borrowers with special financial status. And when they have this kind of title of the white glove or wealth, they want the signing experience to be personalized and they hire us as notary signing agents to represent the bank at the signing. So these clients, when you see a white glove or wealth client, the lender and the signers are going to analyze you more closely when it comes to dress, grooming, and overall service than other clients. Um, we want to remember that all signers, regardless of financial status, deserve the best, right? We don't like to discriminate and say, well, only the wealth clients get the, get the nicest clothes and the best service. That's not right. Every signer deserves it. Right. We want to strive to make it our habit to dress according to the occasion and to provide the best service we can all the time. However, there are some lenders that provide that right, that special service for their wealth clients or their white glove service. And so when you're handling these signings, you want to know that the signer will be called to rate your performance and to provide feedback. That call is going to ask, what were they wearing? Were they late? What was their attitude? Were they helpful? Were they nice? Were they accommodating? So you want to keep that in mind. Um, we have one client that uh, calls the signing a white glove signing. So when you get a white glove delivery uh, on furniture, for example, they're going to unwrap the furniture. They're going to set it up in the place that you want it. And they're going to make sure that it is perfect. And they are going to even shine it up and clean it up before they leave. So how do we translate that to the signing? You want to be there early. Right. If the signing's at 10, get there at 950, knock on the door right before 10. Be ready to start signing at 10 o'clock. Uh, dress to impress. So, again, don't go crazy. Don't wear your, your best Sunday best necessarily. But are they sign are you signing at someone's home? Make sure you look appropriate. Wear your nicest business casual look. If you're signing in an office, go business professional. That's an opportunity where you can wear your suit wear a beautiful dress or some nice slacks in your, your finest shoes. And remember, you have to treat the signers with utmost respect. Um, financial transactions deserve respect, right? People work hard to own real estate. And so we wanna give them respect and dignity when we do the signing. It shows them that we take our job seriously and that we, we respect them. And again, even though we're talking about maybe the white glove and the wealth clients, we wanna do that with everyone, right? Make it your habit to be that way with all signers. And when you do that, you're gonna keep getting the calls. It's the notaries that treat every signer with respect, arrive on time, they're always on time. And if they're not, they communicate it, right? They keep that communication with the, the signer and the company that's hiring you. And these are the ones that also at the signing, make friends with the borrowers. Maybe not so much that you say inappropriate things like you might with your friends or be way too casual, but be friendly, be accommodating, be helpful, do everything you can to make the signing a success. And when you do that, you're going to keep getting calls. And that's when you really make uh, partnerships with signers and the companies that hire you.